Hello everyone. Uh, I am Frank Rudiger Lopez. I will be. This is Harvesting Sounds from Beyond. Podcasting is for everyone. I will basically be going over a few basic tips and things I have done and learned while podcasting, and you know, give you the the ways that I've learned. So you won't make the same mistakes I did. That's a lot of what I'm based on. Things I did wrong. You won't have to. So. Who am I? I am a historian. This is my podcast. This is the left page. I talk about literature and politics. I am also a writer and I'm an amateur podcast. I do emphasize this because I do not consider myself a professional in any way. And I do what I can in order to, you know, create interesting content, interesting analysis and fun content. That's one of my uh, models as well. So Here's what we're going to do and the ways we're, we're going to talk about this. So first, podcasting, what, what it is, uh, some ideas for themes, formats, and talk about scheduling and a few things to have in mind when doing so. We're going to talk about hardware and software and the difference of the things we need and the things that would help along the way. Uh, at the end of the day, doing a podcast can be entirely free in all accounts. So uh, I'm going to talk about that and give you a few examples, the tools and things that you can do in order to make it work the way that you want to make it work. So hosting, uh, some of the options and the limitations involved, which are basically, well, you need a specific website or domain or place to have a podcast, to have the RSS feed, which is the thing that updates whenever you put a new episode and that updates itself. It's, I don't know the ins and outs, but it's one of the things that we need to make it work. And editing, so this is one of the things that I mentioned beforehand on Twitter that what the hell do I bloody mean when I talk about editing? Because we, we know like, oh, you need to edit. Okay, what, what is that? What do you do? So I'm gonna share a bit about what I do and a few general tools and, and things that you can do. Um, although mine is particularly specific in terms of interviews and a sort of talk show kind of thing. Uh, definitely a couple of insights that will help if you want to do something or involving like sound effects in the background or just something a bit more elaborate. And finally, a bit about monetization because, well, we, you know, earning a living is, is helpful. And just sharing a bit about what I do or what I've been doing and a few different ways that people can do them. Uh, they're also lovely color coded for everyone. Uh, podcasting. So there's a lot out there. I'm going to be mentioning a few different themes and ideas and f following a few podcasts that I both enjoy, recommend, and show give some light into the, such a wide variety of themes. For an example, I barely mention all the ones I listen to or try to listen to, but it'll give you an idea of what can be done. So the narrative podcast, so telling a story or uh, be it a more specific one or telling different stories, be it retelling folklore or original stories, sharing short stories. There's, there's a lot of those uh, news and interviews, you know, that those more formal and institutional along with those like more political, more interpretive. So there's a lot that can be done with just that. There's analytical and critical work where I kind of fit a bit more in, where I go via different works of literature and short stories. So you have more comedy things and chat shows and a lot of those things blend in together. Things, they're, they're all rarely one thing. It's a lot of different mixes. The, the role-playing podcasts, which are a whole thing all on their own. So, you know, your D&D &D kind of thing, just there's a lot of those out there. And there's a lot more, like I, these are a few of the major ones, but like, you can do whatever, uh, it's audio, it's a radio thing, it's it sky's the limit. There's a lot you can do with your imagination and look at Magnus Archives, for example. So here are some examples of different things in different podcasts and what they're doing. So we have Rev Left Radio, which is one of the podcasts that I'm loosely affiliated with. They do political, historical, critical analysis and a lot of interviews. We have Horror Vanguard with John and Ash, who have done stuff for Romance in the Gothic and work with horror movies and a lot of analysis and interpretation. We have uh, Najo's Imaginarium pod, which is talking about art history. And, you know, this is a monthly one, for example, 
Rev Left Radio is a more weekly or fortnightly. Imaginary is a monthly one in terms of preparation. So I will talk a bit about that in a second, but just for an example, we have IC Cedric's Fabulous Folklore, uh, another weekly one, but much shorter and definitely interesting aspects of folklore, but more contained around 18, 20 minutes, a bit more. I have Missing Legends, which is a lot more narrative and focused on telling different stories. We have Eldritch Girl by C.M. Rosens, which uh, is quite interesting on weird gothic stuff and nonsense, as it says right there. So uh, another good, more narrative one telling uh, in audio format the book The Crows and then more to come. We have Critical Role, which again, D&D, a lot more focused. Uh, Advantage D&D, which is another role play one, really interesting, really fun and a really high production value in terms of music, sound design, uh, which can be a bit daunting. But, you know, we, we start off easy just to, to give ideas, because especially when we're starting off on ourselves or with a few people, there's a lot to learn. But it doesn't mean that you can't create something high quality or something that is important and something that is me meaningful. We have Coffee with Comrades, for example, Critical Work. Partially Examine Life on Philosophy, Season of the Bitch, which is on feminist analysis and of course really incredible, Faith and Capital, Religion and Socialism. So th there is a lot, and these are just a few that I selected. It took some time. But so talking about themes and formats, this is going to be important because that's what's going to define what you want to do and how much time will that take to do. So is it a solo show? Are you going to do it yourself? So is it your own schedule, your own organizing? Are you going to do everything? Are you going to record? Are you going to prepare, record, and edit? So how much time are those going to take? And definitely leave some time for editing. I will go over that eventually. But definitely take the time you need to edit into account because it takes a while. Is it interviews? So who are you going to need to talk to? Are you going to need to schedule with others? So you're going to need to reach out. You're going to need to set all those things up in a way that allows both for a sort of reliable schedule of releasing episodes along with recording with other people and preparing for those interviews. So is it more than one host? So the importance of building that schedule together and preparing things. Being reliable in a release schedule is really important for listenership because people expect your podcast. So if it's going to be weekly, it's going to be fortnightly, it's going to be monthly. These are things that help you grow and help you maintain a, a base of people who listen and who enjoy and who are expecting your show. So these things are important. Of course, due to circumstances, those things vary, but ideally that's what you want to do. So is it narrative? Is it all done beforehand or is it still in process? I mentioned Eldritch Girls because it's based on the Crows novel. So that first narrative text is already prepared. While the uh, podcast work is, is still a lot to be done, that actual narrative already exists. So that's something to consider if you're going to do, if you're going to do some storytelling, if you're going to do short stories or a particular larger story, which you're going to interpret or dramatize. So is that already done or is that still in progress? Would so you need to leave the time for that, for that writing, for that editing? So definitely something to keep in mind. So what do you need to prepare to record? Is it a movie? Is it a story? So I, I do short stories and books a lot of the time. That takes a while. And that has been sort of problematic in history, in my history, just, you know, because it takes time, especially doing it with other people. Uh, and lately, as I've been doing it sort of solo and hosting the show myself, it's, it's been useful to like, okay, I can do this. this. This is the time I need and leave to record, edit, and well, prepare. So, in, oh, I, oh, that's on the next slide. But, so let's get to it. Uh, again, the reliable and organized schedule that suits your needs and possibilities. It doesn't need to be weekly necessarily because sometimes you're, you're not going to be able to and you're going to burn out and that's not going to be good for anyone. So, these are the things to keep in mind. And of course, it doesn't need to be that strict. Uh, I mentioned it because I do it fortnightly. I know that those who do it weekly, I don't know those who do it monthly. Uh, but, you know, it, it's something that you learn in time and sometimes, oh, especially in terms of monetization and creating extra bonus content, like, okay, how do I fit this in? And keeping all these things in mind is elaborate. It's sort of difficult, but it's one of the things that helps you organize and helps you prepare and create interesting content that you're happy with. That are like, yeah, no, I enjoy what I'm doing. 
So again, time to prepare, record and edit. In my case, the reading, recording and the editing. That's the Audacity logo, which I will go over later uh, with images. But that's what to keep in mind, how much time it'll take to prepare. And editing takes a while. Editing, in my experience, at least starting out, it takes about double the time to you record. So you record an hour, it'll take about two to edit around that, especially when you're starting out. You, you get a bit more savvy uh, when in time, you get a bit more touch and things go quicker and easier. But as a baseline, it, it, it suits. It's suitable that it takes about two hours or it takes about double the time. So now let's talk a bit about hardware, uh, the nitty gritty of things. So what do you need? You need a phone, you need a laptop. That's about it. If that much, you can have one or the other or both, but that's about it because a lot of different software, as I will go over in the next couple of slides, is also free for both of them. But there are options that there are, uh, because since you're going to edit, considering editing on a laptop or a computer, and that software is also free, you that's what you need. So what are the things that could help or will help in time, especially as you develop and are setting aside the time and money to do this. So a good microphone, that's basically the thing which I need. I don't have a good microphone, uh, but those things are expensive. So uh, for example, Blue Yeti is a sort of reliable brand and has, uh, this is going to be important, it has microphones with USB entries and the other headphones ones. A bit expensive, but the, it, one of the brands to consider. Uh, the Audio Technica 2020 is a, a recommendation that I got from a friend who does a, a lot of podcasting and does good work. So here it is. You will notice, and this is important, uh, this one is also not that expensive, but you know, it's it's affordable and it's really good. So definitely an example I, I wanted to give that's like, oh yeah, this, this one is good and I've heard from it. So cables and interfaces. This does not go out to USB or the headphone jack, which I forgot the actual coding, but this one is XLR. So it's important to keep in mind the cabling for this uh, XLR to USB, for example. So uh, these cables can be a, a tad expensive. So definitely something to keep in mind, at least from my neck of the woods is somewhat, but if you get a mic that does not have an entry to your machine, do not forget the cable, that's important. So the pop shield, this is a pop shield. This is really important and I also need, these ones can be fairly cheap. These are not expensive things, but they basically, you put them in front of the mic and they block usually the, well, the sounds that pop, the p, the f, and b, uh, which it, I will show the waveform in a bit. And those are the sounds that pop usually and create a sort of ringing uh, noise when you're listening back to it. Uh, and now something worth mentioning, do you want an audio interface or a mixer? You know, the, those little boxes which are very expensive and usually filter the audio and allow more editing. So at first I don't think so. From what I looked, from what I read and from my own experience, unless you're going to do a real high-end technical work, uh, you're probably not going to need it, especially starting out. Like a good mic, the pop shoe is really crucial. It's something fairly cheap. Uh, these are going to be more than enough. And even if you don't have them, given phones recordings lately or even laptops, like these things can be done cheaply or rather without any cost. So it, it's maybe if you're going to do a lot of work with involving music, involving a, a lot of different audio effects. But from my experience doing a, a talk show kind of thing, an interview and conversational podcast, it's not something I don't think I'll ever need. Um, Again, amateur, amateur, but something to keep in mind. So software, I'm going to go for recording and uh, editing. While a lot of the the programs can be the same, there's a, an important difference and I'm going to go over why. So how are you going to record? Are you going to record in person? So it's just going to be you or, or when recording with other people, are they going to come to your house, going to record on the same place or are you going to record as things most usually happen and given pandemic online. So I'm gonna be recording with a friend and the recording themselves too. So uh, ideally what you wanna do when you're recording with someone else, you both record locally because you do not lose anything via internet connection and you have a higher quality because you, you're not gonna have that problem. So, but you're not gonna always be able to do that, especially when you're gonna to have to guests and you don't wanna 
have to, the guests do any more work to, you know, be a guest. You, 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 you want to be accommodating. You want to be a good host. It's about hospitality, too. So recording online, how, how do you do that? And what are some of the tools for it? So exactly. Having guests, you want to accommodate. You want them to feel welcome. And an important touch, for example, is always check, uh, especially when you're doing an interview kind of thing, double check after you recorded it and edited usually it's like oh is this something you're comfortable with is that something you want me to take out you know just double check that they're happy with what they're doing and accommodate them and their experience and whatever they are happy with and if there's something unexpected or something won't change always be respectful and a good host to your guests that goes without saying and goes for pretty much anything but worth mentioning as an extra so here are some of the options when you're recording online, which are the most problematic. Because if you're going to record all locally, you don't need any of what I'm going to mention in this slide still, because the editing software already records that. So you don't need any extra hassle. But if you're recording online, you're going to need something else. Because, for example, while I could record locally while talking on Skype, you can't record both ends of Skype on one computer. You have programs that do that, but that's paid. So again, going to go with the free options because I feel like those are most crucial. And with the title of the talk, podcasting is for everyone, can be. So Zoom can record separate audio tracks and just the audio, like we're recording the video, but you can also just in the options like toggle, oh, record just the audio and in separate audio tracks. So if there are two or, or, or more, even more people, like there's the two people free limit for Zoom, which is unfortunate, but, and is also online dependent, uh, which is the, the point we're talking about, but it, you can definitely record separate audio tracks, which is crucial while editing, because at one time someone has background noise and you wanna have that part be quiet or they interrupt and, you know, handling those things with multiple audio tracks is pretty key. So, but you have another option and this one is entirely free. Um, Discord has, uh, which is a sort of, you know, online, it's the more <laughs> uh, casual Slack, uh, which is a sort of online kind of chat board thing. It's, I'm not sure how to define them, but it's what they are. Um, but it has functionalities like Craigbot which is uh, a bot that you add to a server, again, entirely free, it's online. But it, when you add to an audio channel, it records those tracks with different uh, separate tracks for the people involved, so free or more. I've done that with free people. And it gives you a link when you're done, which you can download in a variety of different formats to edit that. So it's entirely free. It's again, the online dependency thing, but it's really useful, especially like, oh, you don't have the Zoom for this. So this is an entirely free option that allows you to record all the separate audio that you need. It's not the best, but it works really well. So it's a free functionality that can be useful. So now we're gonna go to the editing bit uh, and then to the editing proper. So what can you use to edit your audio? Uh, Audacity is the one that I use. It's free. It's fairly elaborate. It has a lot of tools. I don't know everything that it does. <laughs> I know what I need, perhaps. Uh, and it's not that intense or heavy. Like To give reference point, I'm, the laptop I'm using is more powerful than the one I had, but the one I use was pretty awful and very old, and it still ran Audacity fairly fine. So, uh, giving giving the, it, the patience to work out, save often, and given all that, it should work fine. It, it, it'll work out. Sometimes it will, especially in when uh, launching the application, it can lag a bit or it can eventually crash, but there's usually no audio loss when that's involved. I've had no issues when saving or exporting, even in that machine, so should work fine. You have Apple's GarageBand, which is again, free and involved with the Apple ecosystem. So you can do that on a tablet, for example, and more things I said. And just, you know, just to mention it, uh, you have Adobe's Audition, which is paid and not really necessary. Probably for what you're gonna do, you're not gonna need it. Audacity and GarageBand for that matter, or other free programs you can find are definitely more than enough for what you're going to need, uh, even in terms of, oh, adding audio effects, adding music, adding all these kinds of things, you're probably not going to need Audition. 
or any other pay program. It, it doesn't seem necessary, but you know, wanted to mention it, getting it, getting it out of the way. So, oh yes, hosting before we get on to the editing and I scare everyone with what it is. Uh, not really. So what are some of the options with the, with the ones I use and what is out there? Is it both in paid or necessarily paid pro for forms and not initially? So I use Libsyn. It's got a variety of different plans and it is paid. It's very customizable with both. I think the initial one is like $5, then I think 15 and 20 and so on. And it has monthly plans, so you can cancel any time. That's important because I'm, I'm going to mention it in a second. But it also gives you analytics and very detailed episode by episode and monthly. So you can have a lot of different information what you're listening. Even I have the $15 tier, for example, because no, no, I have no issue mentioning that. Uh, but the $20 one example already gives you even more detailed analytics. So it's definitely very interesting and in terms of space uh and that's going to become relevant they usually come with an amount of megabytes which is the size of an episode usually in my experience not doing a particularly heavy one not that much music just an intro and outro and the actual recording in the middle around 50 megabytes per episode uh it's an average no, no my mistake 50 megabytes per hour uh of episode Usually it's around that. And because the 50 megabytes, for example, has the 250 megabytes. So you can have five episodes for five one hour episodes per month at the most or around that. So, and you know, that, that evens out because if you have a two hour one, so it's a large amount of content and with a lot of detailed information and pretty much all the ones I mentioned do the distribution themselves of like sharing that to other podcast distribution sites like the Google podcasts, um, Apple, usually you need to do it yourself. I think one I will mention does it themselves, but it's, it's also not that much of a hassle. You basically provide them with uh, an RSS link, which you get from either of these, all or all of these hosting ones, which is the link I mentioned for the release. And you supply them with a particular thumbnail and description and that releases automatically. Libsyn has an added functionality of adding a specific uh, Apple podcast description, episode and season number, authorship. So there are definitely functions there. So we have SoundCloud, for example, uh, which has a limited free plan, which is three hours a month. It isn't that much, but you know, especially starting out, that can be fairly sufficient. And it has a single annual plan, which isn't particularly expensive. I believe it's 14, no, it's, is it about 17 or $18 a month in the annual thing? But you can only get the annual uh, from what I read. So, it has unlimited, it does not have an audio limit and it has other functionalities, especially in terms of monetization and uh, you getting a bit of money for each listenership. But I, I get, uh, there's only so much I could prepare and research for this, but SoundCloud, if you're gonna release a lot and you're willing to put in a bit of this extra investment, it, it can be worth it. Again, of the podcasts that I mentioned, they use different alternatives. So uh, I believe Fabulous Folklore uses Podbean, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know Horror Fanger uses SoundCloud and I know RevLift Radio and others like myself use Libsyn. Uh, so what is out? These are some more paid options, even if SoundCloud is a free one. So what are some free ones? So we have Anchor.fm, which is free, entirely free. But from what it seems, it seems to work only on mobile. I think you can have some options just as a hosting. But this one is, it's also from Spotify, I think was worth mentioning. And it both records and hosts, if you're going to do it on mobile. So you edit it in program. Uh, which can be practical. Maybe I, I don't, I wouldn't want to edit on my phone, but if it's something that you're willing to do, it can definitely work well, I think. Uh, and it is again, entirely free. And finally we have Podbean, uh, which from what I was reading has very, very interesting free plan. I, I believe it has either four or 500 megabytes. No, I think 400 megabytes on the, the entirely free plan. Um, it can be paid monthly or annually. So it has those two options and like SoundCloud, which has a single annual plan, uh, but it also has a variety of different options, much like Libsyn and gives you analytics, gives you information. 
uh, along with, oh, this is something I want to mention and I will get back to later. Uh, in terms of ads and things that I can add, Anchor.fm, I think it has automatic like inbuilt ads that it can put into your show and you need to toggle those off from what I read. Uh, others you can add them or you can have different partnerships that you can put them yourself but um, you can also have like these sort of opt-in ads which go into your episode uh, be, be, whether you want them or not or you know it, it, it goes by what you're comfortable and what you're happy to do and willing to um, and finally I mentioned the personal website which Libsyn also has which is a website which is your own it's your own link it's it's hosted by Libsyn, but it's entirely yours. So even like, I think one of the most expensive plans he has just, you can have your name, not even have like, cause my website is leftpage.com uh, slash Libsyn or dot Libsyn.com. Uh, and you can have just leftpage.com if I have one of the more expensive plans, slightly more. Uh, and Podbean also gives your own personal website. It's not just, oh, it's soundcloud.com slash user slash whatever, or it isn't like, I, I, I don't know exactly how Anchor does that, but it, some in between. So these are some of the options for hosting. There are definitely more out there, but these are some of the more popular, more interesting ones and the ones you you might have seen or heard of at the very least. So. Ah, now, now, now's the big one. Now's the editing. So first, prepare for the shock. This is the waveform. This is the Audacity interface. This, this is it. Uh, <laughs> so here we have. Um, this is my episode thirty-seven, which I'm currently editing. I'm well ahead of that, but this is what I'm doing. Um, you have both the separate audio tracks. You have like the host one, which is me and my guest here. And this is when we're talking silent and I'm, I'm going to go over a few different things. So this is the, you know, the timeline. So I'm very zoomed in because the, these are seconds and these minutes and you can have a larger picture, but especially when you're editing and look closer at things you're going to cut or things you're going to silence. And I'll go over those in a second. Um, you want to have it close. So you, because here's my approach when editing. I want to make myself as invisible an editor as possible. I want to make it seem as seamless, as fluid, as conversational as I possibly can. Because it becomes cleaner to listen to. It becomes a lot more fluid, a lot more comfortable. Of course, due to limitations in equipment and both experience, that isn't always as possible as I can enjoy or I like, but it's, it's, it's my approach. That isn't always your approach. You may want to do a more sectional between like, oh, this is some a topic we've talked about. And as we move on, instead of like having a, a transition or, you know, sometimes in conversation, those things don't come as naturally when it's something planned and having an outline, for example, um, you want to make a cut with a sound effect. I know Horror of Anger does that and along with others. So sometimes you want to do that. You want to section things off uh, or sometimes you just keep it a fluid thing. It goes by what you're willing and what you're happy to do. I want to give you some tips of what you can do and I'll tell you what, oh, this is what you should do. There are a few things you should do regardless because they don't matter. Uh, they're more technical and it, it goes beyond your own style, but you have you can have your own style of editing. That's why I'm sharing mine and what I'm going to be doing. So first things first, the microphone. Always pay attention to the microphone, which is recording. I have done that mistake. Well, having a, not great, but having a mic. So it, it recorded all around them. Echo, always something to, to double check, especially with Audacity. Usually I recommend connecting the mic beforehand because it doesn't always update when you put the mic in after the program has been launched. So usually put the mic in, make sure it's registered by your laptop or computer, and then record if you can record in Audacity, which again, you don't have to, but if you do, something to always keep in mind. And here as well, uh, in the little microphone, this is the, the recording volume. So it has a sort of baseline. Uh, depending on the mic, you're gonna want to increase that or not, or, and you can also do that on your own computer, on your settings, you can increase the initial audio volume which you're being record which you're recording or which is coming in so things to keep in mind that will vary from mic to mic computer to computer so it's going to something you're going to have to feel around a bit uh, here the red button is the recording one play pause stop the recording these are the entry ones so this is what you're listening to so in this case the headphones have you know cut uh, copy, paste, 
I'm going to go over what this button is because it's important and do th this is going to be the volume that you're going to be listening to. Uh, and when it goes via the waveform, uh, this is where it's going to register in decibels. And then usually for when I edit, I keep a sort of baseline volume of my computer. So like, oh, this is what I'm listening to. And ideally, I want to leave it on that baseline, the loud, the louder in inverted commas as I can, because sometimes, and I've heard this on a few different podcasts, it's a bit lower, even in the highest settings, especially like when commuting or listening in a bus or that sort of thing. Sometimes you, even when it's on the highest volume, you're not always going to hear it. So I'd rather leave it on a sort of average baseline. So it's like, oh, it's not too loud. It's not too low. Uh, so if it's, so if you need to increase it because of ambient noise and you want to focus on that, you can. And if it's a bit too loud, it's a quiet environment, you can turn it down. So this is something I do. In particular, I don't know how others do it, but worth mentioning as well. So getting into the thing. So what I edit, so I'm going to go with a few examples. Some important things to know when editing more than one track and keeping those tracks in sync. So as I mentioned, Zoom and Craig bought via Discord. When you get those uh, recordings, you get them uh, synchronized. You get them when it's starting recording because it's recording at the same time for all of them. But if you're recording locally, there may be a difference. There's an internet difference. So uh, how do you do? You clap. You, you clap. And if there's a slight time difference, when you're editing, you just sync them because it's usually going to look like this. So you do this or this. Uh, it's important. It's really important, and especially when there's more than two people. With two people, you can get away with. It takes effort because sometimes, especially little responses, that things like, oh, right, or, oh, yeah, that's exactly it. Or when you're agreeing with things, if those get out of sync, it sounds a bit weird. So the clap is useful, simple thing, important to note. Noise reduction, that's crucial for whatever you're going to do. And I will go over the specifics in a second. And the effects tab, a few of the options. Again, as I mentioned, I don't know nor use everything that Audacity can do. I use enough and sufficient for me, at least for now. And I will go over a bit of those in a second. So, and exporting and finalizing. So how do you finish? And a few things on that. Um, just worth mentioning it. I don't, it doesn't hurt to do that. So. This is about 70% of what I do, or 80 even. That's probably an um or an ah from me, personally, because it's, it's hers. So when you're talking and when you're doing these things, like you stutter, you have uh, language vices, things that you repeat on, on the way that's like, it's a bit much, especially when you're editing. It's like, oh, right, I said basically, or uh, yeah, that's right, about 20 times or in sequence. Uh, and it's, they're very close together. So like... You tr what I do in that case is try to cut those out, try to trim them in a way that's like, oh, it's not too bad, not that much repetition. So, but in this case, uh, it's in particular, it's an um or an ah. And sometimes when it's a more, especially for example, talking about a book, uh, that time it's going to be a more heavy subject, it's going to be a more, more intense. So you want to, you do want to leave those in because like, especially if it's conversations like, <sighs> a bit more difficult subject and getting that flow or that tone of conversation, it can be important. It's something that comes with time, the touch and the approach you want to have in editing, even with something as simple as making it a cleaner audio without these stutterings, without these interruptions, without these extra noises. So, and you will also notice uh, that this is entirely separate. It's not joined other with words. So, it could be, for example, that this particular previous section, that one is, ah, uh, right, right. We, we, these, the ums or the us are very close together to a different word where you can't evenly cut it. But it, sometimes you don't want to cut it because, again, with the subtlety, at least in my case, you can notice, you can notice the cut, you can notice something coming in. And that can be a bit jarry if it's a bit too often. You can do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't or couldn't, but it can be a bit much. If you do, you can also use sort of a fade-in thing where it becomes more subtle and you don't notice, oh, there was no audio there and suddenly there is. It, it becomes, oh, right. It, it becomes a bit more fluid. So you have tricks when even doing those things. So 
in my case, and something I've heard, which is a, a tip, um, at least the first 20 minutes, you want them as clean as possible because that's the first impression. So you want a cleaner audio, you want something that's kind of crisper and cleaner. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. Of course, you, it goes from what you're trying to do on how you're going to approach the entire audio, but it goes from what you're preferring. So something important before we move on, you'll notice that both of these tracks are mono tracks. When you're recording, a lot of the time it's going to record on mono. Sometimes it's going to record on stereo, and I think Audacity defaults on stereo. But the worst thing that can happen if you record on stereo with a mono entering thing is that because there's a differentiation when you have the stereo, because it looks almost like two different tracks. It's smaller and it's either duplicated. Uh, or not, because it's on two different years. So it, there's sometimes a difference. If you record mono on a stereo, um, or you record stereo via mono, one of the years is going to be silent, usually the right here. And Audacity has functionalities which allow you to like, oh, turn into mono, and you're not going to have to lose anything or going to have any issues if you accidentally do that, or even intentionally or whatever. If you don't notice and that happens, you can fix it, no problem. Again, things I've done. Before we move on, one last thing, you'll notice that I have both tracks selected. That is crucial because if you, because what I'm doing is I'm cutting, I'm not silencing it. I'm not putting, making this bit of audio into silence. I am cutting it, I'm removing it and making that shorter. If you do just one, you're going to lose that sync. So when cutting different pieces of audio, uh, removing something in particular, always select both, always select both uh that will have mistakes if you do that so things to keep in mind again so uh moving on a bit here's another important thing this is the silence function so sometimes when you're talking and more than one person you're going to have bits or even just background noise or you know i'm messing around my desk or i'm drinking a bit of water that can come through via the mic so what you're going to do then, because you're not going to want to cut it because either the other person's talking or, you know, that, that kind of thing, uh, you're going to want to silence it. And this is what this magic little button does. And I find it magical. Uh, it silences that audio. Simple as that. It just silence and control L. Uh, <laughs> I have it here because it's, again, it's really good. It's useful. It's important. So something to keep in mind, especially when doing more than one person. Now, what I'm going to talk about next is the effects tab. So there are a lot of different things here and I don't necessarily use all of them. I'm gonna talk about a few of the ones that I use and what works for me. So we have Amplify, which can allow you to increase, a part, you select a particular section of audio and you increase that via decibels and you experiment there you, like numerically what works for you or not. I usually, when increasing a particular bit, three, four, maybe five at most, because again, I don't wanna keep it too loud, I keep a sort of baseline when I'm listening and I try to keep the same computer volume so I don't lose that reference. You can do that for the entire track. This is what this does, uh, this particular sec uh, tab here. Uh, this is the general volume, which you can increase or decrease the decibel volume of the entire audio track. And this and below you have like left and right ears. Since we're all talking mono and you're gonna talk about a single thing, you're not gonna need that differentiation, but it's just worth mentioning what this is. So. Amplify does that. Amplify also reduces audio. So you can add like, oh, minus three or minus five for something that ended up being a bit too loud. So like a laugh, an exasperation, those types of things which can at times pop because here you have a sort of ideal audio. If it goes a bit, if it goes like to the very edge or beyond, then it's popping. Then it's like that sound in your ears and that's not comfortable. That's not happy. No one wants that. So, uh, Normalize, which I'm going to mention in a second, does that for the entire audio. It helps keep a baseline like, oh, the audio will not pass minus one or minus two or minus three, which is a sort of good basis as like maximum decibel level for the entire track or for as much as you select it. But um, if you want that subtlety or occasional or selecting just a bit, like, oh, even then, like this audio is so a bit much in the reference point, you want to use Amplify, it's very useful. You have Fade In, 
self-explanatory. You select a bit, click fade in. It gives you some options. I and you can preview pretty much every effect because they have their separate menu when you click on them, uh, as I will demonstrate with noise reduction in particular. And like fade in, fade out. It's self-explanatory and simple. Noise reduction, I'm going to go over with the particular menu in a second, and that's something you always want to be wary of and always want to do. And the normalize, which helps to keep a general baseline for the entire audio, and it is fairly simple. So this is the noise reduction one, and here's why I'm going to go over it a bit. So you notice, first of all, I have selected a bit of audio that is silent. Inverted commas again, because what does noise reduction does? It reduces the sign that, or I say sign, uh, sound that is in the background for pretty much any type of audio recording. Uh, usually when recordings, for example, this right now, uh, it has some of that because of like the background noise, because I'm not using my specific mic or anything, it's not getting as much or at that same level. But mics usually, just because the way recording audio works, it has a sort of shh. Sometimes it's gonna be more subtle, sometimes it's gonna be more telling. And you don't want that. You do not want that. So you select a few seconds of just that noise as a sort of reference and control thing. Um, and you get that noise profile. And then you select the audio what you want filtered. The instructions are here, but I felt it worth mentioning all the same. Uh, you can select both that particular thing or pretty much the, I do the entire track. I do separate tracks because again, each different recording and if mic has a different level of that. So for this particular tr guest track, I selected their silence. I got the noise profile, selected the audio, and testing. you test around with how much you want. The sensitivity is the level of sound that is picking up to, to trim or to silence, really, or reducing, and how much of it you want. Because my mic isn't so great, I usually keep it very high. But again, the preview function is there to help you out and help you give, oh, this is how much I want, this is how much I need. Um, and eventually you do okay and do it all. Really important because it gives you that cleaner audio and it gives you like, oh, okay, it's doing it all and it's fine, great. So finally, um, the final step, which I feel like it's worth mentioning, it's fairly simple, but exporting. So once you have all done, you have edited to your heart's content. Um, and I, there's one thing I want to mention before we move on. Um, you go export. And again, when saving in between, you can save project, which saves as an audacity thing and a, spe a specific audacity uh, executable app really on your computer. So it's like, oh, you click that, it launches where you were at the, that exact point and after what you're doing. And it's heavier on your computer, it's a lot more space, but it's uh, it saves as an Audacity project so it can continue in Audacity. You don't need to export it out and import it in. One thing that I will mention it, um, be wary of where you're saving and where you can save because I've had some like um, issues like have to run it in admin mode to be able to save it in specific places. It was a bit annoying. Uh, it might have been that computer, again, the back computer I was mentioning, but you know, just something to keep in mind. Finally, um, before we go on to the monetization bit and a final e editing thing, when you're doing sound effects, when you're doing music, uh, I always recommend, which is not something I do, I should, um, do copyright free, do like Creative Commons, do that sort of thing, because it allows you to be on more platforms and, you know, avoid certain issues. Uh, so non, you know, music that isn't like a particular thing. So either classical music that isn't from a particular version or thing, or you just know like some uh, copyright free, that, that kind of thing. Uh, that you can have more easily or, or without any issues. I know at least uh, Spotify has some more issues about having like licensed music. Uh, so always try to do unlicensed as intro and outro. I think those things work well as like, you know, easing in, easing out. It, it creates an interesting feeling. And, and sometimes when you're doing a solo thing, you want a bit of background noise just to, you know, keep a sort of good level, definitely lower, keep in my mind the audio levels and the volumes, which you can control here. 
but just some, these are my editing tips. These are things I do and things I find interesting and useful for what I'm trying to do. If you're going to do, for example, a narrative thing, if you want sound effects, you want transition, you want effects, you're going to do a bit more of that. But it doesn't stray too far away because if you want a particular effect on a particular section, well, you can, again, edit a track, add that effect at that particular time, add that volume, and you can test that thing fading in, fading out. It, it, there's a lot you can do just by being aware of what I've been trying to explain and elaborate here. So finally, monetization, there are a few different options, both in terms of like being sort of crowdfunded separately or being paid by what you're effectively doing. So like Kofi, Patreon and ads themselves. So Kofi and Patreon both have different programs and, it, and things for like, you know, being paid by listenership, being paid monthly, being paid in particular, like, Coffee, especially like, oh, you can't just buy a single coffee or, or coffee for someone. Um, or you can have a sort of monthly thing, which the person can allow via a particular account function, uh, which Patreon does automatically. Patreon has a lot of, coffee has similar functionalities to Patreon from what I've been checking. Um, I've been using Patreon because it's one I knew at the time and I knew that it can do. And Patreon has lots of different functionalities as well for different posts you can make an audio as well. So for example, if you want to create bonus episodes for your show, and that's the thing about monetization and creating bonus content and sort of separate content for listeners. Um, if you want to do that, Patreon offers you a special specific RSS feed, much like the whole thing I was mentioned, um, which you can give to uh, as a sort of special Patreon thing and it updates that feed automatically. So for example, I do a sort of monthly poetry club thing. Um, and that is a, a, an episode in, in itself. And when I do that, I add the audio file to Patreon and that creates a specific link which exists for, which they, the, the listenership, the subscriber can use with the specific podcast listening app or application to listen to, if not even directly on Patreon. So uh, to give an example for Apple, uh, when I create that specific bonus episode, it updates a specific bonus episode feed on Apple Podcasts. So I don't need to faffle to ha ha so I don't need to mess with that. It does that automatically, which is really useful and worth mentioning. But you can also use ads, which again, it helps with the unlicensed things. Um, if you get some sort of partnership with something, for example, uh, a lot of different uh, role play podcasts do like, oh, dice things uh, or a particular book or, you know, these kinds of things, uh, things that make sense. Not always, sometimes it's gonna be a particular service or thing that has nothing to do with what you do, but you know, I'm not going to judge. I don't think it's helpful. But there's a lot of options out there if you're comfortable with what you're doing and, you know, uh, going after these particular things. And as I mentioned before, a lot of different programs from Libsyn, uh, SoundCloud, I think, as well. Um, Podbeam and Anchor has this sort of listen uh, opt-in ads, which can add and, and, and gets a little bit of revenue. So, there are options of how much you're willing to do, what you're comfortable doing. I personally don't want to do ads I, or that sort of sponsorship thing. I, at least for now, I don't not comfortable with. So I do Patreon as this sort of crowdfunding thing. So it, it, again, it goes to what you're comfortable and what you're willing to do in terms of what you're doing and any content that you create as a sort of an incentive or a bonus. And again, we go back to the scheduling and what you can do, what you're ready to do. And that that's always going to be a negotiation with yourself and with others on what is working, what isn't, what isn't working for you, what isn't being pleasurable to you, uh, what isn't being meaningful to you. So these are all the things that you don't need to sort of juggle when you're trying to create these things and being sustainable in a sort of medium to long term. So, because you can easily just, oh, do the podcast, edit it, and not trying to work off or harass with the monetization, figure that out and just do it on your own. So, you know, th these are some of the options. These are some of the things that are out there. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, these are some of my basic tips, ideas, things, mistakes I've made along the way that you don't have to. And it's, Hopefully this will be useful to you. I am on Twitter. I am a lot on there with the links I mentioned at the start at Frank Gothic and at Left Page Pod. So feel free to ask me around there and 
I, I pretty much always online. So happy to answer any questions, any other ideas or doubts you may have or suggestions. I'm, I'm always there to, to listen and offer any advice that I can. Thank you very much.